as the new year approaches, Second Corners would like to express our gratitude to everyone for having supported us all this time. Here's a little gift that we have prepared for you guys. It's only something small, a podcast, but we hope that you guys like it. So, without further ado, let's get started. January is the month of late winter in Boston. Snow keeps falling and covers all over the town. The cold and dry air had overstayed their welcome, and which is annoying to deal with. This winter, everyone has stopped their activities early at night to curl up in a warm cotton blanket. Only a few stay wide awake, possibly because their hearts are overflowing with emotions. When night falls. It is also the time when I feel the most lonely, and perhaps only the night in Boston can understand how I feel. Every time I feel sad, I have the habit of writing out those thoughts and feelings into a little daily journal of mine. Sometimes it's just for relief. I cried because I was lonely and homesick. It's been three years, and because of the COVID pandemic and my job here. I barely got a chance to return home in Vietnam. I miss my family and Saigon badly, especially during the holidays, which makes me miss everyone even more. There was Christmas last month, which, similarly to the Lunar New Year in Vietnam, is the biggest and most important holiday of the year for Westerners. During these days, people usually spend time with their families, decorating their houses, making Christmas trees. And cooking traditional dishes, the streets of Boston on Christmas are stunning and full of lights. Shopping malls, streets, and buildings will be decorated with tall Christmas trees and giant spheres with colorful lights to enhance the romantic atmosphere. On these occasions, I usually wander around or just stay at home. When I go for a walk, I sometimes peek through the window. Seeing all the families dining and whining, all warm and cozy up with each other, which is in complete contrast to me, all alone and cold, makes me even more homesick. Fortunately, I have two Asian friends who I can call on in these situations. These three expatriates from the same culture can sympathize with each other, which makes me feel a lot better. The Lunar New Year is near. Browsing through Facebook. I've seen a lot of pictures of friends in Vietnam, and everyone seems to be busy preparing for Tet, such as shopping, cleaning, decorating the house, and making chun cake and Tet cake. In a way, those activities mirror Boston. My American friend asked me, "Did something happen? Why are you so sad?" I was the most in happiness three years ago, but now I can only feel it through our memories. I miss when my father scolded me, the meal my mother cooked, the times I fought with my brother, the times I played blackjack, and the times I hung out with my friends. Oh, the crowded streets, Saigonese! Now all I want to do is leave everything behind and fly home to spend time with my family. I was in class this morning when the phone rang and my father called. Wish you were here, my dad said. I wasn't ready to turn on the camera, afraid that when we saw each other, we won't be able to hold our emotions. I'm fine over here. You don't need to worry. I assure my father. Dad called to tell me about the springtime atmosphere in the family. Ted is also the only time of the year when Saigon is quiet and empty, because most people go home to their hometown to celebrate Ted. This year. My family and our neighbors pack Ted cakes together. At night, the children gather around to look after the pot of cakes. My father has a decorated apricot tree with beautiful blooming flowers in this Ted. The younger brother is now capable of assisting his mother with housework. He even drove his mother to the Ted market in the morning. I should be happy, don't you think? But the sadness persists. I'm upset because I can't join them. And can be there with them. When I was 18, I had the same youth ambitions as other teenagers. I wanted to get out of my comfort zone, 
my family embraced that idea of mine, and I got to freely explore the big world out there. But it's not that simple. After living there for a while, I realized that the world is bigger than I thought, and living away from home is even more difficult than I could imagine. I'm not sure how many times I've wanted to give up and return to the arms of my parents. However, at that time, I also understood that life has never been easy. Perhaps I found it easy because my parents have endured all of those difficulties for me. I also believe that wearing luxury brands clothes, living in a bigger house, and living in a more developed country would make my life more enjoyable. But now I have realized that the most precious memories in my life were created by family and good friends, not by those superficial things. They are the people who are always there to love, assist, and support you. So, it's not surprising that the message Lisa did to Fei, which means to travel is to return, went viral that year. Venturing out into the great unknown and experiencing life firsthand, these are the steps to become truly major. After that, you will start to appreciate all the big little things that make life so wonderful, like love, friendship, and finally family. The further you travel, the more valuable your home becomes. Perth is a sacred time for everyone to come together and reconnect with family and loved ones. So, no matter how busy you are at work or how far you travel, everyone tries to arrange work and return to celebrate Perth with family and loved ones, no matter what. With only a few days until the Year of the Tiger 2022. Saigon Corners wishes everyone a peaceful, joyful, and happy new year 2022.